In the 20 or so years I've been writing code, I used to think that to become a better, more senior developer meant working with more and more complicated code and using the latest features of whatever the current hot framework is. <sighs> but you know what? During my time in various different roles, I've come to realise it's not about that and discovered three things which I really wish I'd known sooner, which, if you stick to, will skyrocket your career as a developer. To prove the power of this first one, think about the last time that you bought one of these. I tried to open this up. It's no use. This sort of stuff drives people mad because it's not clear how you're supposed to open the packaging and you end up wanting revenge on the sadistic person who designed such an evil plastic prison. REVENGE! But whilst this is a problem with SD cards and other products, you're probably not aware that you can cause the same level of frustration with your code. You need to think carefully about how you write your code so that it doesn't cause a high level of confusion and frustration by following something I like to call the psychopath principle. There's a famous quote from John Wood which goes something like this. Always code as if the guy who ends up maintaining your code will be a violent psychopath who knows where you live. Whilst most people can have a bit of a laugh at this, you should probably be able to see the absolute and complete sense that this makes. Because when it takes longer to work out what a function is doing than it does to open a new SD card, then you've got a big problem, right? So writing easy to read code is something that everyone can do, it's just not that many of us actually do it. A typical thing I see a lot of new developers do is write code which is unnecessarily short and compressed, like writing a JavaScript function all on one line rather than splitting it up into the individual steps that are going on. And yes, I've been guilty of that in the past before too. The initial solution was a little bit unelegant. It's almost like you try and show off your skills, but at the same time you're making this code incredibly hard for other people to read. So no one really cares how short your code is and you're not going to impress anyone by trying to use lots of clever tricks of a language to create the shortest possible line of code for your functions. We're not playing code golf at work here. But on the other side, you don't want to use extremely long variable names or 100 line long functions that do everything under the sun. You want to reach that sensible balance. For example, writing an easy to read function is a little bit subjective and deserves an entire video on its own, but you can probably sum this up with three things. Functions should be no longer than they need to be, maybe four to five lines. Functions should do one thing, and functions should be well named. Another thing that won't help you when that psychotic person is banging on your front door is writing a confusing bit of code and then documenting it like crazy with comp. Uh, excuse me for a moment, I'll be right back. <clears throat> Sorry, the uh, psychopath was just saying he thought my comment was, uh, how should we say it? It's a crap pile of crap. You do need to think carefully if you're about to write a comment, Comments are not meant to explain what is going on with your code, they are there for explaining why you did something. Like a comment that says, takes a value and multiplies it by two, is actually useless, because hopefully what your line of code is doing should be self-explanatory if you've named things well. Whereas a comment like, the X library is used here because the Y library causes problems in Chrome and Firefox is helpful because it's explaining the reasoning as to why that line of code looks like that. So should you start following the psychopath principle right now? Yes! Yes, yes! Even if you're just starting to learn to code, think about this right now because the sooner you start treating your code like it could get you into trouble, the more effective you will become. Try it now. Go and have a look at the very last bit of code that you wrote and ask yourself, would someone else understand what's going on with this if they had to read it? If you can't read your code back to yourself, then chances are you're breaking the rules of the psychopath principle and it will keep you in a newbie state of development and hold you back in your career as a developer. But writing easy to read code is only the first part of the battle. This next thing will separate the beginners from the professional coders and it's all related to a famous author. Not that one. When I started thinking like Oscar Wilde, it changed the way I write code forever and I wish I'd followed this strategy earlier in my programming career. It's about demonstrating a modern intellect approach to writing code and you should also start doing this right now. You might be thinking, what the heck is modern intellect and how does it apply to coding? Well, it all stems from a quote from the author which goes something like this. To expect the unexpected shows a thoroughly modern intellect. And at its heart, this quote is rooted in opening up your mind to embrace uncertainty and adaptability. 
If there's one thing that we can expect to happen when we run our code, it's that unexpected things will happen. So the Oscar Wilde strategy will encourage you to write your code in such a way that is capable of handling events, values, and user input which you aren't expecting. For example, don't assume that the value that has been passed into a function is a string because that string only function you're about to use on that value might cause an error if that value is not a string at runtime, or don't try and access a property on an object which may be undefined. There are lots of different examples of when things can go wrong. Lots of strongly typed languages might be a bit less prone to this, but other languages which are less robust, <coughs> JavaScript, require a bit more rigorous thought. But the ultimate example of unexpected problems can be demonstrated with user input. Just because you're asking a user to enter something into a simple text input doesn't mean that they won't find a way to supply some wacky value like an obscenely long number or a string with some strange characters in it. So extra care needs to be taken with this and you should definitely treat any user input with caution and make sure your code is capable of handling a wide range of input without serious problems happening. The other thing which will help you develop your sense of what might go wrong with your code is writing unit tests. And yes, I can already hear the groans from here. I actually dislike unit testing a lot of the time and try and justify to myself why it doesn't make sense for pretty much anything I'm working on. But when I do write tests, I find the magic of exploring what might go wrong coming to life. And writing those tests with the inputs and the expected results gets your brain thinking about what might happen if some extreme values are passed to a function or are missing when it gets called. If you are struggling to find the motivation to write tests, you can always use AI tools like ChatGPT or Copilot to help you out at least writing some basic tests which you can then tinker with to ensure your code is strong enough to cope with unexpected things. So testing and methodologies like test-driven development are abilities which form part of the larger developer skill set, which is something which needs to be nurtured if you want to be a rockstar developer, and you can do this by adopting a holistic mindset. So the word holistic means to be aware of and emphasize the whole of something. In your case, this will be all of the tools, techniques and technologies which are part of the developer ecosystem and go way beyond just coding in a simple language. As I mentioned at the start of this video, a lot of people, including myself at one point, don't realize that being a developer, especially a more senior one, isn't just about writing complicated functions and dealing with larger and larger code bases. Writing the code is pretty easy, but knowing how to configure a build tool, create a deployment pipeline, optimize a build, resolve a problem with a third party package, or fix an odd caching issue are things that are really, really tricky. And it's what experienced developers get paid lots of cash for. Money! I have money! I have lots of money! So having a holistic mindset for web developers means you need to develop skills outside of the standard HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React world. You don't have to be an expert from day one, but it can pay you back big time later on to work on those other skills rather than ignoring them and not being capable when faced with those juicy technical and architectural issues. A couple of things can help with this. First, deploy your projects and code early on in your learning journey. This will help you develop an awareness of hosting platforms and later on continuous integration and deployment. You can try out different platforms and ways to get your projects live to see what the advantages and disadvantages of each are. Second, try and add something new to each project you build. It might be a caching layer to your API, which enables you to learn about how this integrates with your existing code and the advantages and pitfalls it brings. Or it might be making use of a new AWS service, which you haven't previously used before. Whatever it is, just trying out something new is expanding your skill set and building that holistic view of the development world. Because, as the saying goes, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. But even when you bring all of this together with the psychopath principle of writing clear code, the Oscar Wilde strategy of expecting weird things, and having the mindset to expand your skill set outside of writing code, there's still one thing that is way more difficult to deal with than any of those other things. And if you want to know what that is and how to overcome it, then check out this next video where I break down what this massive problem is and what you need to do about it. But I'm off to see if that guy at the door has gone yet. He's still there.